Hello everybody and welcome back to Analog Vernacular. Today we're going to be playing some more Rogue Trader. I have made my way back to the ship to see if we can actually go back to our void ship now that we've gotten rid of the artillery. And uh, this is here, so let's read this and find out if we're able to go back. Pilot Nemos. The pilot dressed in a crumpled uniform adorned with the Von Valencia's coat of arms still looks quite pale. Her white hands bear red marks left by the wheel. The scream of terror she let out when the missile flew right past your shuttle is etched in your memory. Her voice quivers slightly, but even her fear cannot stop her from using typical voidsman jargon. That was some flight, your lordship. If we'd been a little less lucky, we'd be checking in at the port in the sky right now. What was that weapon they fired at us? Can't say I know, your lordship, but the shots it fires certainly fly quick. I've never seen guns like that before, and they were firing from far away. Almost from beyond the bar, the horizon, that is. Who gave those yobs a terrifying contraption like that? Your name, pilot? My bad there, your lordship. Senior flyer, senior pilot Nemos. Appointed, uh, appointed by the senior deck officer to serve on your personal shuttle. Get me back to my ship. Interesting. We were also able to tell it to take us to the governor, too. I didn't realize that was going to be a thing. Permission to report, Lord Captain. Over the past few days, I received several messages from different decks complaining about anomalous behaviors in the ship's cogitators and servitors. The machine spirits are restless and rebellious, and no tech litany or ritual of pacification can rid them of this obstinacy. The tech priests can deal with this vessel systems, but the servitors... They make errors in their tasks, disobey orders, change the assigned rituals, or sometimes downright freeze as if in a trance. A click comes through the Vox, uh, followed by a weary sigh. Lord Captain, occurrences such as these are caused by errors in cogitator's calculations, or have some other sensible explanation. I beseech you not to take after those who whisper about the ship being cursed or possessed. Adir joins the channel and chimes in playfully. Oh, don't start, old man. All these peculiar happenings have long since uh, turned into local legends. A door slams shut, a lumen starts flickering. Folk have grown used to all of that. So our resident ghost has decided to up the ante. I'm telling you, things are only going to get worse from here. The Technomats inspected the servitors and concluded they pose no danger. According to the servants of the Omnissiah, such behavior is caused either by the Echoes of minds not completely eliminated or by manifestations of the machine spirit's will. Nevertheless, the faulty servitors make the crew's task considerably more difficult, and High Effect Totem Janrus Denrock would like to discuss how he should deal with the defective property. He is awaiting your audience on the bridge. How do I exit the screen? Back to bridge, there we go. What is void ship management? Okay, this is definitely gonna be for later. <laughs> okay, we're gonna have a full on skill tree for our ship as well. All right, I'm sure this will come up later. We'll deal with it then. There was an incident in the officer's quarters a healer team is required? Is that something that I should actually address? Probably not, right? Alright, we have level ups. Choose a special ability. Cool. Finest Hour. The target of Finest Hour gains more bonuses, so let's go over the bonuses once again of Finest Hour. The officer grants an ally an extra turn with full AP and MP. During the extra turn, there is no attack limit. Okay. During the extra turn, the target deals um, extra damage. Until the end of combat, the target gains the effect of voice of command. Ooh, that's kind of cool. 
The target of Finest Hour gains more bonuses. All negative effects are immediately removed from the target. Until the end of the officer's next turn, the target cannot die. Hmm, survivability, okay. Target gains a bonus to temporary wounds till the end of combat. It's three times the officer's fellowship bonus, okay. 15 uh, temp HP. Um, the target of finest hour gains more bonuses. During their extra turn, any kill made by the target restores 1 AP and 1 MP. Up to the fellowship bonus times. So up to 5 times, okay. So you can get a max of 5 extra AP and MP. The target can redirect the ability with uh, their remaining AP and MP to another target. Wait, what? Redirect the ability with the remaining AP and MP to another target? I don't under quite understand that one, but does it mean that we get to pass it on to another ally? I'm not really sure, but I like the sound of this one. Special ability and a skill. Okay, so dismantling attack. Immediately inflicts one exploit on all enemies in combat, then makes a free attack against a target. The attack always hits. Until the end of combat, the target of this attack suffers minus 30% penalty to dodge and minus 30% penalty to armor. So, it's, it's a boss breaker. Until the operative's next turn, the target cannot move, and the target's MP are reduced by minus 3. Dismantling attack also cripples the enemy, reducing their weapon skill and ballistic skill by minus 30 until the end of combat. Do like the sound of that. Dismantling attack also intimidates all enemies in a 5 cell radius, uh, reducing their dodge and armor by 15% until the end of combat. Target also provokes an attack of opportunity whenever it attacks. All of those are pretty good, but I think... So, make them less... Tanky. Make them less effective with their own weapons. It's got to be one of these two in my book. Alright, maybe... Well, since we have two people who, who are this class, we'll do one and the other, maybe. Okay. You'll take that one. And you'll take logic. Wait, um, no, you don't have the skill for Medicaid yet. But I think we were going to get it for you, probably. Oh, yours is... Different. Interesting. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Okay. Because you're different classes, essentially. Alright, Daring Breach also grants plus 10 movement points until the end of the turn. The warrior does not provoke attacks of opportunity this turn. Until the end of combat, the warrior gains a... Hold on, is this a completely different thing? It is. So the warrior immediately restores all AP and MP and gains a agility bonus. Movement points. Until the end of the turn, they don't lose movement points after performing attacks. The warrior has no limit on melee weapon attacks this turn. And then adding more movement points is actually huge because then you can get to more people 
to continue chaining it. So that one already sounds really good. And no attacks of opportunity, so you can just freely run around, which is great. Until the end of combat, the warrior gains plus 4 MP for each kill, and may use their MP after attacking or using abilities. Okay, so that's useful if you use it early on in a fight. But this one is just really good during the turn, which tends to be how I use this. Um, it tends to happen a little later in the fight, and you just use it for that turn. Um, yeah. For one round, the warrior becomes the priority target for every enemy hit by their melee attacks. Um, also, the warrior gains plus 20% parry and plus 2 deflection until the end of combat. So basically, it just allows you to redirect damage towards you while also reducing the chance that they're going to be able to hit you. That's pretty cool. This turn, melee attacks deal an additional um, plus to damage. I think we're going to take this one, though. I like the sound of that. Alright, now your finest hour. Now which one did we take? We took this one on the last one because of the uh, fellowship, but you're not as fellowed. <laughs> so, so maybe we'll choose something different for you. More bonuses. Target deals extra damage. Till the end of combat, the target gains the effect of voice of command, so it might be that one. Survivability. And temp HP, based on fellowship, which wouldn't be good. So it'd be one of these two, and I think I like this one. Okay. Soldier gains the ability to make a number of extra attacks equal to their weapon's rate of fire, minimum of two using the weapon attack that normally costs the least AP. These attacks do not spend AP. Till the end of the soldier's turn, their first attack against... Oh, so the reason I was able to... When I gave her an extra turn, it was because it hadn't rolled around to her next turn. So she was able to use even more action points for it. Okay. So it doesn't last till the end of battle. Until the end of the soldier's turn, their first attack against each new enemy automatically scores a crit. The soldier immediately reloads their current weapon. Okay. Until the end of the soldier's turn, they gain plus four movement points and their attacks do not spend MP. Okay, so it allows you to reposition a little bit, which I like. Until the end of combat, the soldier's rate of fire is increased by plus 30%. Until the end of combat, all the soldier's attacks are 20% harder to dodge. Until the end of combat, the soldier's ranged attacks gain plus 10% armor penetration. I mean, all of this stuff sounds pretty good. Until the end of the soldier's turn, each of their area attacks deals additional damage equal to the number of attack targets. So reposition, or for the rest of the fight, you just have a bunch of bonuses. Bunch of bonuses. Okay, inflicts one exploit and minus two dodge and armor. I mean, you're not going to be using this a lot. I try and keep you away from people, honestly, so. Awareness. Maybe I should be investing in some lore stuff. Um, I think that might end up hurting me by the end of the game if I don't start investing a little bit into lore. Maybe at some point I'll have to choose a character for each of these specific lore things and invest in it. Like, you being warp would make sense, her being warp would make sense, but like... All right, we'll think about that. We'll think about that. All right. Now.
now I'm supposed to go and talk to Dan Rock? All right. Generous Dan Rock greets you with a cool smile and the merest hint of a bow. Pleasure to see you, Lord Captain. How may I be of, of assistance? Victus informed me of a problem with the servitors. What happened? You see, your lordship, the ship's servitors have been malfunctioning of late. They violate protocols, interrupt their tasks, observe crew members for long periods of time, and move erratically with no meaning or purpose. He nervously pulls on his luxurious frock, as if it were uncomfortably tight. Had it been a routine technical fault, I would have decided the fate of those servitors myself, but I deemed it necessary to notify you. I do not wish to hide such irregularities from the Lord Captain. If you wish to observe the servitor's unusual behavior before you decide their fate, this can be arranged. The majority of the defective units have been delivered to one of the storage compartments pending your decision. Pascal Hanneman uh, expressed the desire to be present during the inspection, should it be carried out. I suppose the expertise of the esteemed Magos may come in handy. Okay. Let's take a look. As you wish, your lordship. Would you like the engi engine seer prime to accompany you? Yes. As your lordship commands. Okay. Report of a tech phenomenon that was observed during the Lord Captain's visit to Bay AKN 108 from the words of High Factotum Janrus Danrock. When his lordship arrived at the scene, he found the servitors in the same position that they assumed after they had been corralled into the bay, all standing in a long spiraling line and facing the center of their strange formation. The moment his lordship crossed the threshold of the bay gate, their bodies jerked into motion, all as one, as if observing a command. The servitors turned to face the lord captain. The technomats asked with overseeing tasked with overseeing the defective units, even reached for their weapons. But then the servitors went still just as abruptly, staring his, at his lordship with vacant eyes. All present held their breath, disturbed by the sight. We awaited for the lord captain to speak his lordship analog vernacular von Valencius. Gestured for his engines here prime to study the servitors. The engines here prime slowly waded into the motionless ranks of the servitors, peering into their faces and checking the readings. There was no haste in Pascal's actions. With mesmerizing diligence, he inspected every single unit in his path, and Binaric prayers were his companions in the investigation. The examination confirmed the Technomat's initial hypothesis. The servitor's souls, or rather, the souls of the people they once were, had awakened. Not yet fully conscious, of their past and present, these half-machines could nonetheless feel primitive emotions and sensations such as fear and pain. This undesirable consequence of shoddily performed lobotomy is most rarely observed, and yet, for some unknown reason, it has occurred in every single one of the servitors gathered in the bay. Oof, that sounds terrible. All present held their breath, disturbed by the sight. We, we waited for the Lord Captain to speak. His Lordship, Analog Vernacular Von Valentius, Man, if they feel pain, I don't want to do this. Demanded a report for the defective unit status from the Technomats. They they gave a long-winded detailed report. It could have been summarized as a single key point. Despite the servitors' abnormal behavior, they were still quite capable of carrying out tasks, and therefore the circumstances did not call for their termination. Their termination. Okay. I'm going to take some steps towards the servitor, see what happens. Immediately, the servitors, each and every one of them, stepped towards the Lord Captain in perfect unison. They mimicked the movements with frightened precision. The rogue trader halted in place, and after a moment's thought, waved his hand, and the servitors, just as synchronously, repeated that gesture as well. When the Lord Captain turned quizzically to the Technomat, so did the servitors, as if mocking him. Whatever the Lord Captain did, be it an incline of the head, a wave of a hand, or a step to the side, the defective units repeated it without a moment's delay or hesitation, like grotesque marionettes controlled by an unseen puppeteer. We observed this mime unfold in distressed bafflement for nearly a minute until the servitors finally came to a stop. Not sensing any threat from them, the rogue trader approached with confidence. Lord Captain, examine them. As High Factotum, 
It was I who had prompted that, enti that entire inspection, and thus it was my duty to follow the Lord Captain. As we stepped closer, we noticed a fascinating irregularity. The servitor's pupils, normally still, were shaking wildly. Their bulging veins were pulsating under their copper collars inscribed with their past offenses. It was as if these mindless half-machines were locked in a perpetual state of extreme tension. A visibly shaken technomat behind us proposed that the human souls had awakened within the servitor's bodies. After a long slumber deep within their lobotomized brains, formerly bereft of intelligence, they had attained awareness, feeling, and understanding. After a pause, the technomat added that the servitors used used to function properly, and that no one had been able to explain the change in their behavior, his gaze still trained on the motionless but animate half-machines and half-people. The Lord Captain stepped away. Okay. I'm not going to have them disassembled, knowing that they feel pain. Um. Interesting. Now, early on in the game, when we approached any of the servitors like we we had like a hum that we were able to um feel and i wonder if this has anything to do with it let's announce our decision his lordship looked at me with unwavering resolve and it was w and it was that confidence that wrenched me out of the nightmare stupor that had had me tensely observing the scene unfolding before me the lord captain gave the order to dispose the servitors so that their human souls may be released from the torment. That's what I was going to lean towards anyway. Send the servitors back to toil as they had toiled before, for they had not yet paid their dues for the crimes of their past lives, and thus did not deserve clemency. So the servitors are actually like former criminals. So instead of being like um, put to death or something, instead they're lobotomized and turned into cyborgs to serve out their time. That's, whew, this world is wild destroy them for it could spell her horrific heresy leave the servitors to their work for there was nothing in their behavior that the lord captain found alarming we're going on iconoclast dispose of them so that their human souls be released from torment the lord captain's command was executed post haste all defective units were incinerated in furnaces and their remains were expelled into the void the crew was provided with replacement servitors and soon forgot all about the destroyed units peculiar peculiarities. Yet this incident haunts my memory to this day. With the fate of the defective servitors decided, nothing could now distract the Lord Captain from his mission. Okay. Alright, so we're not locked into anything until we hit three, but I think we're just gonna go down Iconoclast. We're actually... Alright, so three out of fifteen there, eighteen out of forty-five here. Gotcha. And this is like a total. Two random allies start combat with temporary wounds equal to their own resolve. Cool. And what does this one do? In the first round of every combat, the rogue trader and their allies gain a bonus to additional movement points. Cool. Okay. Shows you a history. I like that. All right. Now, Pascal is probably around here somewhere. Let's see if we can find him. There he is. Let's go and talk to him, and then we're going to go back. Beyond the side. Yep, okay, so that thing coming out of his back is the Mechandendrite. Throwing out of the Tech Priest's back, swivel in your direction as if examining you with curiosity. So, it has a mind of its own. Doesn't it? Everything we've heard about it so far kind of le leads me to believe that he has multiple personalities, and probably what that means is that there's his personality and his Mechandendrite's personality. Interesting. I have some questions about your visit to Rykad Minoris. The request is approved. I am ready to provide the necessary information. What brought you to Rykad Minoris? I came heeding the call of my mentor, the blessed Archmagus Amanas. We were supposed to meet on Rykad Minoris and discuss my mission. 
Okay, so we still need to find that person. The people who wanted to kill you at the port weren't renegades, it was just a cover. Thank you. Information acknowledged. I will analyze it and take additional security measures. I don't even know where I learned that, because I didn't know that. <laughs> what do you think of this uh, Abel Hanemon? I propose that it was the blessed Amonat who assumed this name. This name is assigned to me. His presence in the hands of heretics is categorically unacceptable. The canon of technological security commands that every effort be made to rescue a high-ranking bearer of knowledge. Alright, I think that we weren't supposed to see this stuff yet until we finished more on the planet. Acknowledged. We're not going to continue talking May to him until we do be effective and fruitful. the rest of the stuff on the planet, because I feel like um, we're not supposed to be hearing that stuff yet. Okay. Okay. Injuries are gone now. We like that. Okay, let's head back into the sewer real quick. Check out what's going on down there. Those people were dangerously close to a whole bunch of heretics, so... Might want to find out what's going on there, if we can. And then we'll move on to the next map. I always keep my options open. First I hear some wicked laughter, now I'm seeing higher ups in our dump. Must be going mad. Spare my life, I'm begging you. The voices belonging to the many residents of the lower levels merge into a single humming noise, unnerving and oppressive, much like the surrounding catacombs. I always have a backup plan. Lore warp, 61%. Oh, the irony. Test failed. Other than the fact that the stains on this dirty wall resemble a symbol of some kind, you do not see anything of note. Ooh, I wonder if there was something there indicating that these guys are, uh... Not very good. Toxic flow of murky liquid comes down from the higher levels via ancient rusted pipes. Okay, another symbol. Failed again. Okay. Filthy excuse for a table is smeared with someone's dinner consisting of algae and corpse something? Starch. Let us not dawdle. 
I am registering unconventionally high efficiency for the unit Cassia Orselio, relative to her limited experience. The unit status has been upgraded. Knowledge is the key to everything, is it not, esteemed Magos? I learned this wisdom from your fellow priests, and it has helped me many times. To the top, or get left in the dust. Cultist, huh? Ah, damn it. Damn. Oh, she failed again. Lovely. 160? Oh, no. Um, let's see. Pascal and Cassia got good rolls. Just in case there's like AoEs, maybe I will spread out a little bit. Oh, I should have attacked. <laughs> Pay attention to your AP, bro. <laughs> Running by Neric Is this guy gonna be an enemy too? Yeah, he's marked red. Okay. Okay, 27. What's my hit chance right now? 100%? Okay. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this thing's gonna be powerful. Do these guys even have weapons? Honestly, like, we might just want to go after him if we can. Man, once again, the sightline stuff in this game is fucking weird and I don't like it. <laughs> um, why aren't we getting percentages? Okay, also, what is this? Target suffers minus five to weapon skill, ballistic skill, willpower, strength, and minus one resolve for difficulty level of the demon for one round. So are these not gonna hit then? I'm confused. This is unacceptable. Oh, that's why I considered their yeah, okay. So if I go here. As the Emperor commands, I act. I'll do it. Rejoice in battle. Okay. Um, why can't you... You have t 
two ability points. Why can't you use it? What happened? Is that a bug? Oh, there we go. Came back. I'll see to it personally. Man, I hate missing 85s like that. Victory is imminent. Kill too. Yeah, I'm guessing the stats on these guys is not very high, so. Oh, I forgot about you. It will be done. Yourself. What was that you or God, I gotta remember to use that first. I gotta remember. I'm not accustomed to being ordered around. Um, I can't use the area one because I'm gonna hit Abelard too, and I don't really want to. So, I've got that and I've got this. This one inflicts bleeding. Nah, I think just a regular attack makes most sense here. Um, all right, are you gonna be able to get it in one shot? Yes. Damn, you do a lot of damage with that. Is that really not a cover spot? Guess it's not. Okay. Sorry, Cassia. Oh my gosh, yes! Well done. Okay. You'll still get to As use your attack. Yep. Go! 
I defy faith. Okay, good effort. Faith without deeds is worth it. Here's my perfect moment. I refuse. Try that again. As the Emperor Commander, we can escape the Emperor's trap. It's your time now. Okay, and it's in a little area here. So costs one AP. No, you, you, one friendly creature, unlimited range. Uh. sight on you apparently but all right that was awesome <laughs> that was really good okay I don't need luck I have strategy Yes. Who if not me? Um, any enemies nearby? Nope, not within range of that. That's okay. Anything is. This is honestly going pretty well. Um, can you see that guy? Sure. All right, there we go. Should have checked to see if I could hit that with the big guy, but that's okay. Um, let's see. Adira, what was your backup weapon? Shotgun, okay. Yes, it did. I wasn't sure. That is foolishness. 
I'm afraid not. Isn't this a job for the serfs? Okay, that adds a little bit more to our stacks. And a race from existence. Should have hit that. Well done. As the Emperor commands, I act. Wow, I did not expect you to hit that. Um, let's make sure first that you can actually hit somebody. 95 on that? Okay. Because you only have two AP, so. Let's add some stacks and hit him. Okay, it is hitting him. It just <laughs> keeps on looking like it's not with how fast the camera moves. Brilliant, Adelard. At your back and forth. It will be done. I will do my duty. Well done. Okay. Performing real good now that he uh <laughs> your wits about you. Now that he doesn't have his injuries. Another level up too. That was a fun fight. Very cool. Very, very cool. Okay. Um, level 10, so Psyker. Oh, I don't think we're going to be able to get the Psyker thing up right now. All right, Lore Warp. It's got to be willpower, right? Um, or we already did perception, so yeah, it's going to be willpower. Okay. Um, commerce or co let's do commerce.
fellowship. Whenever an enemy attacks the warrior, the warrior next melee attack against that enemy deals an additional five damage. Let's see, is there any bonuses we want for stats? You look pretty even except for fellowship, which we don't need to invest in, so that doesn't necessarily need to be a concern for us at the moment. Sure. Desolation, I guess. The damage dealt by charge increased when the ability is used from a distance of five or more cells. Uh, no. If there are no enemies adjacent to the warrior, warrior's damage is increased. Enemies suffer a minus 10 penalty to their hit chance with ranged attacks against the warrior for every enemy in a one cell radius around the warrior. Okay. Charge distance. Ooh, charge distance. I like, I like that. Um, when the warrior takes damage, they gain a bonus to dodge percentage. Stacks up to three times and resets after successful dodge. I like that one too, actually. Okay. Charge distance. That's what we're going to do. Toughness it is. Okay, we got a rapid reload that we wanted. Fired up probably would be good on you. Okay, we'll take Fired Up. Um, I don't think I read that one out, so I'll read it out. Whenever the soldier deals damage, their critical damage is increased by 1% until the end of combat. Agility will give us a bonus, so I like that as well. Let's do Lore Warp. We'll power up. Yeah, let's do Lore Xenos. Lean into that as a strength. We're using ballistic enough with you that I actually kind of do want to put a bonus in there. I always keep my options open. Okay, what did you... Somebody saw something. There it is. K. 
can be equipped pendant. When the wearer successfully hits with a single shot attack, the target suffers slowed until the wearer's next turn. That'd probably be good on my character, using the sniper rifle. Okay, plus five to toughness if intelligence is less than 35. Yeah, that'd be good for you. Increasing your toughness is good. Um, so now you get a plus six. I like it. Oh yeah. We'll have to think about heavy armor proficiency. Whisper has told me a secret. The Emperor favors me today. Increases melee attack damage against demon enemies by plus two if the wearer has a dogmatic conviction. The damage is increased by plus four instead. Always keep your eye on the prize. Let us not dawdle. Okay, check our map. That's why we check. I guess that one would have been auto-collected after leaving anyway. Okay, that was fun. That was a fun fight. I like that one a lot. <laughs> Alright, so there was an exit over here that went into the other map, but I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in the standard front way, which should be out here and up top a little bit. And uh, yeah, we're on to the next area. Okay, so going into this next area, so we're currently in the upper way and we're going to the next area of the upper way. So to the western side of the upper Rise way. To the top, um, that's what we're going to do in the dust. next uh, episode. So thank you all for being here. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next episode. Have a good one, everybody. Bye.
I'd like to give a very special shout out to my patron supporters, Darren York, ZTD, Knife Namase, Kyle the Monarch, Chris Murphy, JW, Quinless, Vlado101, Andy Ford, Bruce Wizzle, Black Mamba90, Eureka Gecko, A Happy Fat Panda, Turkeyfoot27, Pedo Kuto, Shadow Raven, and Nadia N. If you would also like to join this tier or any others, check out my memberships or my Patreon in the description down below.